All right, for more on this, we have Michael Schindler. He's a freelance journalist for publications that include the American Conservative and the Washington Examiner, and he joins us now in the studio. Great to have you with us, uh, Michael. Uh, three years. Do you think that the sentence was justified? I do think that the sentence was justified. I don't think that it's the most important takeaway. I think that overall what's going to happen is uh, Trump's fans are going to stay loyal and the Democrats are going to get even more angry. The things will stay the same while, uh, while Cohen rots in jail. Well, it's interesting. Um, I, I, I want to read part of his statement that he read out in court. He, some excerpts, he says, I've been living in a personal and mental incarceration ever since the fateful day that I accepted the offer to work for a famous real estate mogul whose business acumen I truly admired. He goes on to say that it was a blind loyalty to this man that led me to choose a path of darkness over light. Do you think that that sounds like he's taking accountability? I think that he's trying to take accountability. Certainly, if he was trying to have a career after he gets out of jail, this is exactly what he would say. Um, calls to mind Speer after Spandau, um, uh, trying to say, oh, no, I was just following orders. But I'm, tr but I'm trying to take um, uh, as much accountability as I can. Really, it was my fault. I think that he's trying to set the stage for the rest of his career. His lawyers compared this to Watergate at some point. Do you agree with that comparison? Uh, no, this is a far more minor thing. This is um, uh, this, this sort of thing probably happens in, like in campaigns all the time. Uh, why it's important is, I think, a matter of political theater. This, like this was a man who was inside Trump's inner circle for the last 12 years. It's longer than Judas knew Christ, and yet, like Judas, he betrayed him. Um, I think that it really is coming to the national spotlight because so many people are seeing Trump's inner circle turning on him. Um, and we have to wonder who's next. Uh, like all good political drama, this should foreshadow the next bit of drama. So who is it next? Is it uh, John Kelly? Uh, like Trump's having a lot of like, uh, trouble finding a replacement for chief of staff. And I think this is why a lot of folks are, like, are scared of getting burned. Mm -hmm. He's expressed a willingness to cooperate with other investigations. Uh, but what's the likelihood he'll do that, given the fact that he's already been sentenced? Uh, what's, in, what's his incentive to do that now? Uh, I think that his incentive is improving his public image. Um, as I said, he's going to have a career after this, probably. He's relatively young. Um, if he, oper um, if he cooperates, he'll have a chance of redeeming himself in the public eye. Um, this is what people typically do when they find themselves in this sort of situation. Um, so I do think that he will cooperate. And uh, last question um, is just what, is, what does that mean for the president? What does all this mean for the president? Uh, what it means for the president is that he's going to have a harder time, as I said before, finding people to come close to him and to work into key positions. Um, getting somebody to, to, like, to fill that chief of staff role is already very difficult. Now I imagine it's going to be even more difficult, finding somebody who has uh, like institutional experience, who's willing to put their entire career on the line, is just going to get harder and harder. All right. Uh, Michael Schindler, thanks for being with us on set for that analysis. We appreciate it. Thank you.